dear students this is lecture 20 in supply chain management first let us discuss the questions of the last session the first question is mention two prime advantages of package carrier the answer is rapid delivery and reliable the second question name any two package carriers in india other than what we have discussed in this session many students have given their answers correctly and covered various package carriers in india for example we can say dhl and blue dot third question list the two segments of truck carrier one is tl truck load which means we are utilizing the truck fully the another one is less than truck load that is ltl we are utilizing the capacity of the truck just less than half of the capacity of the truck the next mode of transportation which we are going to discuss is rail as you all know rail carriers involve high fixed cost in terms of establishing tracks locomotives that is engines cars or coaches or compartments and yards so the fixed cost required in rail carrier is higher when compared to package carrier and of course but it doesn't vary much from air carrier because air carrier also involve very high fixed cost in creating infrastructure for air carrier a significant trip related labor and fuel cost is independent of the number of cars but vary with the distance traveled and the time taken that is the labor and fuel cost it is independent of the number of coaches but of course the fuel cost will vary slightly with the number of coaches if you increase number of coaches the consumption of fuel will also be high but the cost vary with the distance traveled and the time taken so any idle time once a train is powered is expensive because labor and fuel cost are incurred even though trains are not moving that is if you keep the train idle for some time it is expensive because labor and fuel cost are incurred even though there is no movement of the train idle time occurs when trains exchange cars for different destination that means we are disconnecting the coaches from one train to another train or uh, shunting takes place like that and uh, sometimes because of congestion in tracks the trains may be waiting for uh, people used to say a uh, crossing so that means train will be kept for idle for some time this idle time will lead to more expense incurred in case of fuel and labor in rail carrier labor and fuel together account for more than 60% of railroad expenses so the main expenses arises from labor and fuel so from the operation perspective it is important for the railroads to keep locomotives and crews well utilized if you schedule the plan in such a way that the effective usage of locomotives and crews takes place then only it will be beneficial and profitable in case of rail carrier 
the price structure and the heavy load capability of the trains make rail an ideal mode for carrying large heavy or high density products over long distances because the price structure is also high but the advantage is trains can carry heavy loads which may not be possible in trucks and also in air carrier so to carry heavy load from one place to another place rail is an ideal mode and also for over long distances because the trucks can carry long distances but it cannot carry very heavy products so rails or trains can carry heavy and high density products for long distances transportation time by rail is somewhat long so rail is ideal for heavy low value shipments that are not time sensitive because the time taken in case of transportation by rail will be long due to various factors what we have discussed in the previous slide uh, like idle time and uh, track congestion etc coal for example is a major part of railroad shipments as we happen to see the goods train carry coal from one end of the country to the another end from south to north or east to west like that small time sensitive short distance or short lead time shipments rarely go by rail mostly the products with the small in nature and time sensitive but in case of short distance means the rail can be used to deliver the products in short lead time the major goal for railroad firms is to keep locomotives and crews well utilized then only it will be beneficial or profitable for the supply chain system the major operational issues at railroads include vehicle and stop scheduling that is we can we have to schedule the stop and vehicle both should happen parallelly because vehicle without stop or stop without vehicle will not give any advantage so both have to be scheduled parallelly track and terminal delays which happen due to many reasons like uh, track congestion or any other reason and poor on time performance mostly we observe that trains won't come in time due to various factors railroad performance is hurt by the large amount of time taken at each transition the travel time is usually a small fraction of the total time for a rail shipment suppose if you assume a goods train is operated from chennai to delhi due to various reasons it may be due to uh, track congestion or it may be due to stop uh, uh, change over that is one crew of stop goes for rest the another crew of uh, stop will take duty so like that this transition will take lot of time and so the total travel time is just a fraction of the total time for a rail shipment next mode of transportation is through water major global ocean carriers include mask evergreen group american president lines and hanjin shipping company sometimes we happen to see container in lorries with these names that means these containers have been moved through 
these ocean carriers water transport by its nature is limited to certain areas because we can operate water transport only where the waterways like rivers or sea is available in united states water transport takes place via the inland waterway system the great lakes and rivers are coastal waters which uh, we also observe in kerala in kerala there are lot of rivers and coastal areas are available so the water transport is very much applicable in kerala for short distances within that state water transport is ideally suited for carrying large loads at a low cost within the united states water transport is used primarily for the movement of large bulk commodity shipments and it is the cheapest mode for carrying such loads it is however the slowest of all the modes and significant delays occur at ports and terminals so this is the mode of transportation which is so slowest when compared to all other modes of transportation because it takes a lot of time in ports and terminals this makes water transport difficult to operate for short haul trips though it is used effectively in some countries like japan and europe for daily short haul trips for a few miles generally the water transport is the slowest one due to that one reason is it takes lot of time in ports and terminals and also water vehicles cannot be operated at a very high speeds uh, like uh, ships or boats or whatever it is it has to be operated in a certain speed that is what we, it is possible in case of water transport in global trade water transport is the dominant mode for shipping all kinds of products global or international trade that means moving the products from one country to another country particularly the movement takes place in large quantity for these kinds of transportation water transport is the mode of transportation predominantly used in export and import of goods for example export and import of cars grains like wheat pulses rice etc apparels and oil crude oil palm oil and other oil products are shipped by sea for the quantities shipped and the distances involved in international trade water transport is the cheapest mode of transport as we have discussed water transport that is ship can carry products in large quantity that is the capacity of the ship is expressed in terms of teu that is 20 foot equivalent unit you can take it as 20 foot size container so a ship can carry 24000 uh, teu that is 20 foot equivalent unit at a time that is 24000 containers of size 20 foot in a single trip a significant trend in maritime trade worldwide has been the growth in the use of containers so due to the growth in water transport so the use of containers has increased a lot this has led to a demand for larger and faster and more specialized vessels 
to improve the economics of container transport. So ship will carry the products in the packages called as containers. So the specialized ships were designed to carry more and more containers and so more and more products also. But delays at ports, customs and security and the management of containers used are major issues in global shipping. Next mode of transportation is pipeline. Pipeline is used primarily for the transport of crude petroleum, refined petroleum products and natural gas. That means to transport the petroleum products or gas products, the government may establish pipelines from one city to another city so that through that pipeline these products may be transported to one place to another place. A significant initial fixed cost is incurred in setting up the pipeline and related infrastructure does not vary significantly with the diameter of the pipeline. That means to create the infrastructure it needs lot of fixed cost but the cost does not vary with the diameter of the pipeline. Whatever the diameter of the pipeline the cost is going to be almost same. Pipeline operations are typically optimized at about 80 to 90 percentage of pipeline capacity. So if you are able to use the pipeline 80 to 90 percentage then we can optimize the usage of the infrastructure. Given the nature of the cost, pipelines are best suitable when relatively stable and large flows are required. So we should have consistent and constant need for flow of products from one place to another place. Pipeline may be an effective way of getting crude oil to a port or a refinery. But sending gasoline to a gas station does not justify investment in a pipeline and is better done with a truck. That is sending petrol to petrol pumps or petrol station or gas station through pipeline is not justifiable and it should be done with the trucks. Pipeline pricing usually consists of two components. The fixed component related to the shipper's peak usage and a second charge relating to the actual quantity transported. That is the price will consist of two components. One is fixed that is based on the peak usage and the second charge it is related to the actual quantity transported. This pricing structure encourages the shipper to use the pipeline for a predictable component of demand with the other modes often being used to cover fluctuation. That is the shipper will use the pipeline for the constant and consistent need of transportation. If at all if there is any fluctuation the shipper will go for the other modes of transportation so that it can use the facilities effectively at a lower cost. The next mode of transportation is intermodal. Intermodal transportation is the use of more than one mode of transport to move a shipment to its destination. That means intermodal transportation uses combination of the various modes of transportation what we have discussed so far. A variety of intermodal combinations are possible. The most common being truck and rail. Intermodal traffic has grown considerably with the increased use of containers for shipping and also growth in the global or international trade. Containers are easy to transfer from one mode to another and their use facilitates intermodal transportation. Mostly the combination is truck and rail. That means we move the products through rail from the railway station to the various places. Again, the goods will be moved through trucks. 
due to the growth of international trade there is a growth of intermodal transportation also containerized freight often uses track water rail combinations particularly for global freight for global trade intermodal is often the only option because factories and markets may not be next to ports that is the factories and markets are not situated nearer to the ports so the goods has to be have to be moved from the ports to various places as the quantity shipped using containers has grown the truck water rail intermodal combination has also grown on land the rail truck intermodal system offers the benefit of lower cost than truck load and delivery times that are better than rail thereby bringing together different modes of transport to create a price service offering that cannot be matched by any single mode for example we assume a large quantity of products have to be moved from one place to another place for example you take uh, trichy to new delhi instead of moving the products in uh, 10 or 20 trucks we can move the products through rail from trichy to new delhi from that place when you want to move the products to various local places there you can use trucks like that while collecting the products in trichy from various places there also you can use the trucks so we can use the combination of rail and truck in land to optimize the cost of transportation particularly when you want to transport the products for longer distances in large quantities it also creates convenience for shippers who now deal with only one entity representing all carriers that together provide the intermodal service that is in the perspective of shippers if they want to use any kind of transportation or any combination of transportation they can get it through one channel so that is the advantage for shippers to exploit the benefit of intermodal service key issues in the intermodal transportation industry involve the exchange of information to facilitate shipment transfers between different modes of transportation because these transfers often involve considerable delays and so hurting the delivery time performance as it involves different kinds of transportation certainly the exchange of information should takes place so that to schedule the various shipments through various modes in right time so that to have better delivery time performance students answer for these questions